Hi, hello everyone. I'm Yono from PyTorch XLA. And today I'm going to present PyTorch XLA as PMD with my colleague Jie Wen. Uh, he will come up uh, to, the po to the stage after I finish. And we, also, we are also going to talk about uh, how we enabled large scale discrete training using this new feature. So, okay. Okay, first, what is PyTorch XLA SPMD? So, PyTorch XLA SPMD is a new API that we are releasing as experimental in uh, PyTorch XLA 2.1 release. And it is, it is a new feature that brings GSPMD into PyTorch. And now, for those uh, who are not so familiar with GSPMD, uh, it is an automatic parallelization system that transforms a single device program into a partitioned one. And uh, the actual transformation is transparent to the user, meaning that the user doesn't need to call explicit collectives uh, and doesn't need, require any special uh, like sharding operations or special torch ops that are uh, implemented for sharded tensors. And uh, the only thing the user needs is to provide the sh uh, sharding hints on a few select tensors. And if you look at the example on the right, we have a simple PyTorch training loop. Um, and I also highlighted a couple uh, sharding annotation API calls in yellow, yellow boxes or yellow highlights. The, the first one on the, on the, at the top is annotating the linear layer, a single li linear layer from this simple model for tensor parallelism. And also we have another uh, sharding annotation API call in the middle of the training loop that's for the input data. So we can actually express or annotate different tensors for different, uh, uh, like different types of parallelism, in, in this case, tensor parallel and the data parallelism uh, using PyTorch XLA SPMD. And the other thing I want to highlight is that PyTorch XLA SPMD uh, is available for XLA backend. And we have uh, an official documentation in PyTorch for XLA devices, as well as our new blog post about using PyTorch XLA SPMD. So please check out if you're interested. <laughs> now, uh, the sharding annotation API is, is the key to, to using this new feature. And the sharding annotation API basically takes in torch tensor and returns XLA sharded tensor. And if you look at the example, I have another example of uh, mock sharding, sharding annotation API call. On the left, um, uh, the, the, if you look at the bottom, there's a mock sharding API call, and it takes three inputs, like T1, which is the tensor we want to annotate with the given sharding uh, uh, strategy, and mesh and partition spec. So we use mesh and partition spec to express um, the sharding intention, or what kind of parallelism or parallel strategies we want to apply to the tensor. And for now, let's just assume that in this, in this example, we are uh, sharding this input tensor uh, evenly across two by four uh, logical device mesh. I will, I will explain more about mesh and partition spec, how they are defined in the next slide. And the important thing here is if you look at the, the diagram on the right, uh, when the mock sharding API is called, we, act, we construct XLA op sharding protocol, which is like a sharding annotation input for the XLA compiler, and attach that to the X, uh, XLA uh, grep node that's linked to the input tensor. And eventually, that gets transformed into HLYR and also gets compiled to, uh, finally, gets compiled to a partition program to be executed. Um, yeah, so I, I said uh, we use mesh and partition spec to express sharding intention or the, the kind of sharding hints that user want. So mesh is, mesh is defined as to uh, describe the logical device topology by its shape, and optionally you can also name the axis of the mesh. And partition spec describes how each input tensor dimension is mapped to the mesh axis. So going back to this is a, a snippet of the earlier example, but going back to uh, the same one. Um, if, if you, in, in this case, in this example, we are defining the mesh as a two by four logical uh, 
loads device with eight devices, and each axis of the mesh is named as X and Y. And if you look at the partition spec at the bottom, it's also defined as a X and Y tuple. So this means that the first dimension of the input tensor will be uh, split or sharded across the X axis of the mesh, which has two rows. And the second dimension of the input tensor will be uh, sharded across the Y axis, which has uh, four columns. So uh, it's eight-way even split or the sharding of the original tensor. So each device holds uh, four by one shard from the original A54 tensor. Uh, another thing I want to quickly bring up is that we are working with our partners from Meta to integrate into DTensor API. And PyTorch DTensor provides abstraction for uh, tensor distribution as well as the APIs to shard tensor and the modules. And, and the goal is to enable the DTensor API not only for the CUDA Eagle backend, but also for XLA Lazy backend. So um, if you look at the sort of a two code snippets on the right, you know, it's exact same code using the DTensor API to, ten to distribute a tensor or shard the tensor, but the only difference here is the device type of the mesh. So if you specify device type for that mesh as XLA, it's going to um, use PyTorch XLA as PMD to distribute that shard, uh, distribute that tensor and continue with the, the successive operation on it. So now I'll turn it to JWN to share some of our exciting results, uh, as well as work on scaling Llama 2 training using this PyTorch XLA SPMD. So hello, this is JWN from uh, PyTorch XLA team at Google. Thanks, Yano, for uh, the great introduction of the SPND API. Uh, here, I want to show you some of the great Llama 2 training results we have produced by using the API. We have benchmarked all Llama 2 models from 7 billion and to 70 billion. Uh, and the matrix we are using here is model flood utilization. Uh, this chart shows us two things. First, uh, we are comparing our SPND results, which are the blue bars here, with our FSDP result, which are the green bars here. Uh, FSDP is uh, one of the most popular distributed algorithm in the PyTorch ecosystem. Uh, and the SPND here has gained us a whopping 28 percentage performance improvement across the board. And second, we are able to scale almost linearly with the model sizes. We have kept around like 55 percentage MFU for the smallest uh, 7 billion model to the largest 70 billion model. And these results are truly amazing. Uh, and, what makes, and what makes it even more amazing is that our SPND uh, performance also scales linearly with the sequence lens. Uh, the previous slides are shown with 1K sequence lens, which are the blue bars here, and then the green bar shows our results of the 2K sequence lens. Uh, the performance degradation is just within 10 percentage for all model sizes and as low as 4 percentage for the largest 70 billion model. Um, at the time we are doing the benchmark, uh, Hugging Face Llama 2 token lines only support 2K sequence lens, and therefore we were not able to measure larger ones. However, we expect similar performance on 4K sequence lens as well. To learn more about this, you can refer to our latest blog post list at the bottom. Now, let me show you how to achieve the shown state of the art performance using PyTorch XLA's SPND API. The technique here is called 2D sharding. Essentially, what we need to do are two things. Uh, first, we need to define a 2D mesh with the data and the model axis. Second, we need to annotate both the model parameters and activations using the defined 2D mesh. Before moving to the uh, SPND annotation, let's recap some of the basic of the dense decoder only uh, transformers. Here I highlighted the two most uh, important components of LLMs, which are the att attention layer and the feed forward layers. The equation here shows the Llama 2 architecture. If we will look into the equation closer, 
uh, we can discover that essentially it's just like consecutive map mode with some element-wise operations in between. So then the key questions becomes like how to annotate the weight, i.e. all the cap capital W here and the activation, i.e. the output of the map mode. Or we can safely ignore element-wise ops because the compiler's auto annotation propagation will do that for us. Now let's zoom into how to annotate uh, the W gate and then the W down part of the feed forward layer. Uh, here's a here's a, like a visual representation of the feed forward layer. Each rectangle represents either the weight or the actuation. The parentheses are, are the corresponding shades of the tensor, and the subscription show you which dimension of the tensor we want to map to which axis of the device mesh. Uh, for instance, the W gate on the top left is of the shape MH. M stands for the hidden size, and the H stands for the intermediate size. The subscription are DMM, which stands for the data and the model axis correspondingly. It means that we want to uh, shard n dimensions of the W gate tensor uh, on the data axis and the edge dimensions on the model axis. Now you can interpret the whole graph. I mean, it looks complicated, but essentially it's quite simple. Like for weight, uh, i.e. W gate and W down, we always want to shard n dimension along the data axis and the edge dimension along the model axis. For uh, activations, uh, i.e. all the x, we always want to shard the b dimensions along the data axis and then the n dimensions along the model axis. So that's all the sharding annotation you need. Next, I'm going to explain why we follow these rules. So um, here's a partition graph after compiler inset on necessary connective ops to make the previous single uh, device program distributed. Uh, let's focus on the first map mode on the top left. Uh, since the contracting hidden size dimension is charted with different mesh axes, uh, two all gathers are inserted to bring them back into full dimension to execute the first map mode. However, uh, the resulting activation is still fully sharded. Um, now let's move on to the uh, second map mode on the bottom uh, right. Since this time, uh, the contracting dimension is sharding with the same uh, model axis, only one gather is inserted to bring uh, the hidden size dimension of W down back to full to execute the second map mode. And uh, finally, to have the final output fully sharded, a reduced scatter is then inserted at where we end to scatter the hidden size dimension that we just bring back to full uh, to like uh, uh, back to like uh, scatter uh, fully sharded. Now you can see that uh, all the weights and uh, and the activations are fully sharded, and and the neither full weights nor full activations are gathered during the whole computation. Uh, that's why we choose to use the 2D shard in uh, mechanism shown in the previous slides because it gives us the best performance uh, best memory utilizations. Um, yeah, so that's basically everything we want to cover today. Um, finally, we want to thank all the key, key contributors and then our partner teams. As always, feel free to join us at our GitHub repos. Thanks, everyone.